This presentation is brought to you by Arizona State University's Julianne Wrigley Global Institute of Sustainability and a generous investment by Julianne Wrigley. So if you think of India, you will realize that at this moment we are in a frenzied state of growth. There is no question about that. We are on the same path that all of you have been. Um, and the fact is that there are no real role models for us to follow which are different. And so we know that this may not be right for us, but there is no other alternative. And so we continue to grow by intensifying the use of our resources and believing that someday perhaps we will also talk about sustainability in the way that you do. But on the other hand, we are also realizing that there are key differences. And that is what gives me some sense of where the answers could possibly lie. Firstly, if you think today in India, we are finding that there are a million pollution mutinies across the country. There are huge protests against pollution, against deforestation, the takeover of grazing lands, of fishing areas, of beaches. But these differently from where environmentalism has come from the rest of the world. These are not protests by middle class environmentalists who are wanting to save the earth. These are protests by the very poor. These are protests by people who know that they are not rich, that they are poor, and yet they're fighting development. Development as you and I know it, because they believe that that development will only make them poorer. So they believe, they, they know that the, the factories that we build, the power stations that come up, will take away livelihoods, will destroy life because of pollution. And to my mind, this very fact should force us to rethink what we mean by growth. The fact is that they are, these million pollution mutinies are forcing us to rethink and to, sh to force us to share growth in ways that we have never considered till now. The Indian forests are where the minerals of India are found. The Indian forests are where the water systems of India come from. So if you take a map of India, it's, a it's an amazing cartographic exercise that you could map out where the most, most important natural resources of India are. The forests of India, the water of India, and then the mineral wealth of India. And it's a match. But then when you put onto it also the fact where the poor of India live, they also live in which are today the richest lands that we know of. And we also know that the only way we know how to do development is to extract resources and to, and to take away the resources, but we cannot replace those resources with the livelihoods that people are dependent on. And that's really where the big tussle for growth is coming today. And if, and, and because of these huge protests over the takeover of forests or the destruction of forests, because of local communities who are arguing for their right to life, their right to livelihood, their right to water, their right to their, their way of life, the Indian state will have to learn to do much more with much less. We will have to learn that land is limited, water is limited, and that we will have to share within those limits, within our constraints, we will have to share with larger numbers of people. If you take water, it's a similar story. Water is very stressed, it's very scarce, and in India, as in many parts of the Western world where you moved with water. So where water, where, when people moved from rural areas to urban areas, water moved with you. In most of India, we will remain rural for a very large, for a very long time to come. 
We will remain dependent on agriculture for a very long time to come. So there are people for whom water is livelihood. And yet we need increasingly water for our cities and for our industries. And so you're beginning to see a huge conflict between the current users of water and the new users of water. On Monday, the day before I left, there was a huge incident where farmers broke into um, an energy company's office and vandalized it because they were angry about the water that was being taken away for a power station, a water that was committed for irrigation. And I think that kind of conflict will grow more in India as resource constraints grow. But this is really where the difference between governments who believe that these constraints are limits, and for many of us, that there are opportunities. I think this is where the, the million pollution mutinies, the people who live within a biomass-based subsistence economy, who know that their livelihoods come from land, which come from water, and they know that the modern economy that is replacing this biomass-based subsistence economy cannot provide them jobs, cannot provide jobs for the unskilled, cannot provide jobs, period. This is, the modern economy is not known for um, its ability to, to provide well-being to very large numbers of people. And remember, we are a billion people. And this is really the opportunity that we have to think about what could be a different tomorrow. The environmentalism of the poor, and that's the environmentalism of the people who are going out there fighting against pollution, against projects, against dams, not because, as I said, that they believe in the environment for tomorrow, for saving the environment for tomorrow, but because of their livelihoods. This environmentalism tells us that resources are limited, that we need to tread lightly on Earth. It tells us that there is an alternative way. We can build economies that benefit large numbers of people, that sustainably use water, share the water, and can sustainably use the land. Think about the same state of Maharashtra I just talked about. One of the biggest issues in that state is the fact that we have, they grow a crop, sugarcane crop, which is a water guzzler in a water stressed area. But you cannot talk about it because it has very high political interests in, in, in sugarcane. Every second minister has a sugarcane um, cooperative factory. But now with the drought, sugarcane is on the table. It is being discussed. The state will have to talk about how it can share water more equitably. It may not happen today, but it will have to happen tomorrow. And you are beginning to see power companies that come up in Maharashtra today actually being asked that they will not get fresh water in the future, that they will have to take the sewage that comes out of urban areas and then recycle it and reuse it for power because water is stressed. So that constraint can become an opportunity. It can become an opportunity to reinvent. And that, I think, is where we need to look for some solutions. This presentation is brought to you by Arizona State University's Julianne Wrigley Global Institute of Sustainability for educational and non-commercial use only.